one very important difference between um, eukaryotic gene regulation and prokaryotic gene regulation is that um, eukaryotic DNA is organized into chromatin and chromatin is DNA along with histone proteins whereas um, prokaryotic cells do not have uh, chromatin. Now, there are two main um, um, roles that chromatin plays in eukaryotic cells. And one is packaging. So if you took the DNA from uh, a human cell uh, out and stretched it like a string, it, um, it would be about three meters long, whereas it fits, or this, the whole genome, this DNA, fits into a cell that's only about 10 microns long. And so the chromatin or uh, the histone proteins help package such a large amount of DNA into a very small space. And the other role that chromatin plays is in gene regulation, which is what we are about to discuss at length. Now, there are several histone proteins and H2A, B, 3, and 4 are called the core histone proteins. And they bind as dimers uh, uh, together um, for a total of eight polypeptides. So two of H2B, two of H2A, two of H4, and two of H3 to form a structure called the octomer. And this octomer is also called the nucleosome. And the nucleosome is the basic unit of chromatin. Another histone called the H1 linker histone binds the DNA that connects our two nucleosomes together. Now, the um, DNA and histone, uh, and DNA and histones are organized in pr progressively compacted structures um, to achieve that packaging that's required to fit all this DNA into the cell. And so, um, DNA has the double helix has a width of about two nanometers. But this DNA wraps around nucleosomes. And approximately 150 base pairs of DNA are wrapped around each nucleosome. This wrapping compacts the chromatin into a, a structure that's 11 nanometers wide and this is six-fold more compact than DNA on its own. Then these nucleosomes further form higher level structures, such as the 30 nanometer fiber, and are further compacted to create two types of um, domains or regions of uh, the chromosome. One is heterochromatin which is more compacted chromatin uh, 
and the other is euchromatin, which is less compacted. How does chromatin um, um, play the second role, uh, which is regulating um, gene expression? So let's say uh, we take the example of uh, the GAL1 gene, which has um, an enhancer upstream activating sequences that are bound by GAL4, and then GAL4 recruits um, RNA polymerase, um, shown here in green, and then you have transcription. However, let's say this DNA with the upstream activating sequences and um, the GAL1 promoter, etc., were to be wrapped around a nucleosome. So these we have nucleosomes in red, and then the DNA in blue is wrapped around the nucleosomes. And here we have the transcription start site for GAL1. And here we have the upstream activating sequences of the enhancer. Since the DNA is wrapped around the nucleosome, it means that the GAL4 protein will not be able to bind to the upstream activating sequences. And since GAL4 will not be able to bind the upstream activating sequences, um, you will not be able to recruit RNA polymerase and initiate transcription of the GAL1 gene. Now, there are a set of enzymes called chromatin remodeling enzymes. Such as the SWE SNF complex. that can cause sliding or shifting of the nucleosomes so that you reveal the promoter and the upstream activating sequences of uh, um, a given gene. So if we slide that nucleosome over to the left so that now we have long stretch of DNA that is nucleosome free and that's the DNA that contains the upstream activating sequences and the promoter for GAL1. Now GAL4 will be able to bind the upstream activating sequences and activate transcription and uh, therefore chromatin plays a role in regulating the accessibility of DNA sequences, accessibility of promoters and enhancers to transcription factors, thereby um, regulating um, the expression of uh, different genes. If nucleosomes regulate uh, gene expression by regulating the accessibility of DNA to transcription factors and other proteins, what determines how well the nucleosome interacts with DNA or how tightly does uh, uh, do nucleosomes bind DNA? It turns out that the histone proteins have a domain called the flexible tail. And 
these tails, um, the amino acids on these tails can be covalently modified. That means you can add acetyl groups or methyl groups um, to, to these amino acids and thereby change the um, the polarity and the charge distributions of these uh, amino acids and um, affect the interaction between these histone proteins and uh, therefore the nucleosomes and uh, DNA. Now, there is a particular way of writing down these histone modifications. So, for example, if you're looking at histone H3, and we are looking at one, two, three, four, the fourth lysine, and the letter, um, IUPAC letter for lysine is K, then you would say you have H3K4 acetylation. If you had an acetyl group attached to the, the lysine residue. On the other hand, if you had um, a methyl group, you might say H3K4 ME, and you could have one methyl, two methyl, or three methyl groups attached, and you would change the notation accordingly. So let's see an example of how um, acetylation happens uh, at these lysines, and also how that might impact the association of the uh, histones and therefore uh, nucleosomes with DNA. So lysine can be uh, acetylated by a set of enzymes called histone acetyl transferases. Or hats and the um, they can also be uh, deacetylated so you can remove the acetyl group by a set of enzymes called histone D acetylases or HDACs. Now, one may note that a normal lysine has a positive charge, it's a charged amino acid, but once you have added the acetyl group, that, um, uh, that a positive charge has been removed and it's this residue is now neutral. Now, DNA is negatively charged because the phosphate backbone, backbone is negatively charged. And since opposite charges attract, it means lysine um, associates will associate tightly with DNA since this uh, lysine residue is positively charged and DNA is negatively charged. Whereas an acetylated lysine will not associate tightly or associate perhaps poorly with DNA. And therefore, um, if you have acetylated um, uh, histone tails those histones those nucleosomes will not be tightly bound to DNA and therefore DNA will be more accessible. And therefore, acetylated histones 
is associated with increased transcription since acetylated uh, histones uh, associate poorly with DNA and therefore don't bind DNA leaving enhancers and promoters uh, accessible to transcription factors and uh, RNA polymerases and so on thereby increasing the level of uh, transcription next let's see an example of how um, um, histone acetylation or deacetylation can impact transcription and um, affect uh, phenotypes um, so we go back to the regulation of the GAL1 gene and we know that if there is no galactose then GAL80 binds to the GAL4 uh, activation domain and prevents the activation of GAL1. Um, however, when you have galactose, then galactose um, binds to GAL3, leading to GAL3 GAL binding GAL80, and therefore the repression of the GAL4 activation domain is relieved and one can have transcription. However, what about the situation when you have both galactose and glucose available in the medium and this is analogous to the situation in the lac operon when you had both lactose and glucose available to the cell and um, in that situation the lac operon was transcribed but not at a very high level since glucose prevents the uh, creation of cyclic AMP um, which is required for binding to the catabolite activator protein and for CAP to bind to its binding site and recruit RNA polymerase and that makes sense from an efficiency point of view since if an E. coli has both lactose and glucose available it would be more efficient to consume glucose and not waste resources on catabolizing lactose. A similar situation occurs in yeast where if they have both galactose and glucose available then it would be more efficient to um, catabolize glucose rather than um, uh, galactose and it would be more efficient for the um, gal genes to be turned off. Now we can't rely on gal 80 to inhibit the transcription of the um, or the recruitment of RNA polymerase by the gal 4 activation domain since galactose is available in the cell and therefore gal 80 has been sequestered by gal 3. However, there is a, a binding site uh, for a transcription factor called MIG-1, a repressor um, called MIG-1 uh, near the upstream activating sequences. And MIG-1 recruits um, a, a, a histone deacetylase. called TUP1 that deacetylates the DNA at the GAL1 promoter. When glucose is available and thereby uh, uh, deacetylation um, of the chromatin at the GAL1 promoter uh, means that the, the nucleosomes associate um, tightly with the GAL1 promoter DNA and thereby prevent transcription or the recruitment of RNA polymerase. Whereas when glucose is not available in the cell, then 
um, MIG-1 is not recruited to the MIG-1 site and therefore there is no edge stack to deacetylate the promoter DNA, uh, promoter chromatin and um, RNA polymerase is uh, able um, it, uh, is able to um, uh, get recruited by the GAL4 activation domain in order to have high levels of transcription. In addition to um, acetylation of um, amino acid residues on histone tails, um, another kind of covalent modification is the methylation of these residue, uh, residues. For example, uh, lysine can have one methyl group or two methyl groups or three methyl groups um, covalently attached to the amine group. This um, uh, methylation is carried out by enzymes called histone methyl transferases or HMTases and um, there isn't a straightforward interpretation of uh, in terms of charge distributions to um, to understand the function of uh, histone uh, uh, methylation however some correlations are known for example um, trimethyl lysine um, H3 K4 ME3 so trimethyl lysine at the fourth lysine of the histone 3 tail is associated with active promoters whereas um, H3K4 ME1 um, so monomethylation at the fourth lysine is associated with um, um, active enhancers Another type of chromatin modification is the direct modification of uh, DNA where the uh, a methyl group is attached to the fifth carbon of uh, uh, cytosine to give you 5-methyl cytosine. This modification occurs at CG repeats known as CPG islands. So let's say we have a gene with a promoter that happens to have a CG 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 pattern and this type of repeat is known as a CPG island then these cytosines will get methylated and this has the effect of repressing or inhibiting uh, or interfering with the recruitment of RNA polymerase inhibiting transcription. Let us put together um, these various mechanisms of um, transcription factor re regulation as well as chromatin regulation to see how a gene might get activated with the example of the interferon beta gene which is activated upon viral infection. Um, the first event that occurs um, after the uh, viral infection is binding of transcription factors to an enhancer um, near the um, promoter of the interferon beta gene. And there are two nucleosomes, NUC1 and NUC2, and the promoter and the transcription start site 
are actually wrapped around um, uh, Nuke 2 and therefore are not yet accessible for transcription to begin. Once this group of transcription factors called the enhancerosome has bound um, to the enhancer, um, uh, this uh, histone um, acetyltransferase, a hat, GCN5, is recruited and forms the GCN5 complex. The GCN5 complex acetylates the histones in uh, the two nucleosomes and thereby making the DNA more accessible. And this leads to the binding of um, the coactivator, the C-terminal binding protein CBP, and uh, the recruitment of the SWE sniff uh, his uh, uh, nucleosome remodeling complex and SWE sniff then nudges nucleosome 2 to reveal the uh, um, um, the 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 data binding site the data box as well as the uh, transcription start site and then RNA polymerase polymerase can begin transcription and therefore the the activation of a gene is initiated by the binding of uh, transcription factors and um, which recruit chromatin remodeling enzymes in order to move nucleosomes aside and make the DNA accessible so that the general transcription factors um, like TBP uh, can come in and the polymerase holoenzyme complex can assemble at the promoter in order to begin transcription.